Hi, I'm Sanaz Tahernia, and I'm here for the Distinguished Alumni Awards for the College of Communication, and with me today is Hank Hughes. Hi, Hank, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. I wanted to start off by asking you, what made you decide to come uh, and study at Com? Well, for me, I knew that I wanted to go to a city, um, and I loved Boston growing up. I grew up as an army brat, so we moved around a lot, but I lived in Rhode Island for a stretch, and I just visited Boston a number of times, maybe when I was like 13, 14, and so it always just stuck in my mind. It's like, oh, I want to go to a city when I go to school. And then I found BU. And it just was a perfect little match in that way. And then it, I was actually in, uh, in the ROTC program. And so like getting that scholarship, it kind of like drove me just straight to Boston University. So you were a, I understand you were a paratrooper for yeah. a number of years after you graduated from Com. Yeah, it was a different life. I mean, yeah. Can you tell me <laughs> a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, yeah, I was... Yes, yeah, so I did ROTC here at Boston, and then um, I was in the Army for about five years. I, was, uh, I did jump out of airplanes. I was uh, a paratrooper. I was a captain. I did two tours in Afghanistan. Wow. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a good time. What made, you, what made you decide to make that transition after you graduate from COM to go into that? Is it something that the ROTC sure. required from you? or? It is, uh, but for me it was more or less about this big family tradition, uh, something we had done since uh, basically before there was an America. Like there are people fighting for the idea, and I just wanted to be a part of that. And I'm really glad I did it, and I'm also really glad I'm not doing it anymore. Right, right. I like so, my life now. <laughs> I mean, I would assume so. Um, so, what made you go? What made you decide at five years that this was it, and you yeah. want to go back to you know what you went to com for? Yeah, I mean, I always wanted to make movies. This this army guy thing was something that I had to do. I felt um, in order to you know become this person that could maybe make films. Uh, I think it did did me well actually. It kind of. It um, makes you grow up really fast. You know, you have to learn how to be in charge of people and make decisions. And um, although it's seemingly a, not a creative field, it can be very creative in that way, especially interpersonally. Right, and at such a young age, too. I mean, yeah. you know, relatively speaking. No, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I was 22 years old, and I was in charge of, like, 40 people in Afghanistan. It was weird. That's crazy. It is crazy, yeah. Um, it's a bad idea, maybe. <laughs> 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 Might be. Tell us a little bit about the films that you made while, you know, you were at Com. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess there's like three levels of production at Com. Uh, so I made some awesome black and white films on like actual film, cut it on a Steenbeck. I, don't, I can't imagine they do that anymore. I have no idea, but uh, God, it makes me sound old, I guess. <laughs> but it's all good. It was great. Um, yeah, you're not old. <laughs> so I did, yeah, I did all three levels of production. And then the second year I made a, a science fiction kind of film called Abandoned um, that played at Redstone. And then my last year, um, I made a film called Star Spangled Eyes, which was based on uh, a friend of mine who was like, he was deploying soon, and uh, we just kind of based on like him leaving in his last day with his girlfriend. I might have asked this, or you know, we touched upon this. Is, some, is film something you wanted to do as a child, or how did yeah. you get into the world of sure. film? Uh, well, I mean, I was really big into skateboarding when I was about like 12, and the natural extension of that is to like videotape it and make a skate video, and I just found myself really enjoying being behind the camera in that way. And then I had this incredible teacher um, in high school, my English teacher, and she just pushed us to make projects. And at some point she said, you know, you should think about this directing thing. Like, you seem to like it a lot. And I didn't really know what that was. Right. But she's like, there's people out there that make movies that do this for a living. And I was like, interesting. I should look into that. And I did. And uh, that's kind of what drove me to, like, come to BU, actually. I knew they had a great film program. And I could do the Army thing here as well. All right. So how do you feel that Calm prepared you for the career you have now? Yeah. You know, I think that the best thing you can do in terms of, like, becoming a filmmaker, at least from, I mean, I'm still young, I'm still trying to figure my own way in a lot of, in a lot of ways, but uh, there was a very, like, safe space here to try different things very early on. Um, once you leave that environment, it becomes about paying bills and it becomes, you become an entrepreneur. Right. And that's, like, fine. It's just that <laughs> that's not what you expect when you get into it. And it's great because I think at the early stage you do need to have this kind of open, free space of like just be creative and don't worry about that stuff for a little while so you can shape this person or maybe this filmmaker you're going to become and then you can figure out how to make that into, per, into an entrepreneurial endeavor and not the other way around. Well, how is that transition for you? I mean, just the whole, yeah. they call it adulting now. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that safety uh, zone is like kind of ripped it, out it from under It hurts my you. stomach. Uh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> adulting is... Um, so funny you mentioned that. It's so true. <laughs> I think that there's something to be said that um, I'm often more scared about thinking about paying bills and being a good husband and being a father than I was of like jumping out of airplanes and being in the army and being wow. deployed. 
Like that was like a tangible fear, but this fear of adulthood is a very difficult thing that everyone just has to, like, I think at some point, like dive into the deep end and then you realize there's nothing you can do about it and just find someone to enjoy the ride with, I guess. Yeah, because adulting, you kind of have people that rely on you, whereas yeah. if you're jumping out of a plane, it's just you. It's just me. <laughs> See what happens. So. Um, as a director, you know, you work with a variety of different people. Sure. What have you learned about leadership and teamwork that you can pass on to fellow alums that work in, you know, all different kinds of industries? Absolutely. You know, I think that when I was younger, I thought that leadership was about having all the answers, being able to answer all the questions that were brought to me. But really, uh, leadership is about listening because you're working with a, a collective of people, all of whom have, uh, you know, probably a lot of great ideas. Right. Um, that they have different expertises that you don't have. And so as soon as I learned that it wasn't about always being right, but it was about figuring out who had the right answer at the right time and creating an environment that allowed for that sort of open communication, that's when I think it started to sing for me in terms of collectively working on something or collaborating and, and bringing everybody into the fold. And really, my best work has come when I think you can uh, get everyone to work together. And what kind of advice would you give? You know, the film and television department, I've, I work with a bunch of the students, and they're all, they're, I mean, they're really good in, at what they do. What, yeah. what kind of advice would you give them, um, you, know, if, you know, to follow your footsteps, to become a director, to go, you know, behind the scenes and do, you know, kind of do all of that? What would you, what would you say to them? Go see the world. Do something that's not film related. I would find something that um, you can make your own, have your own story. I think that's been uh, very helpful for me, whether it's real or not, this whole like um, other life that I led. It's like, it, although it has informed a lot of the ways I see the world or how I interact with other humans, but there's something that uh, I got to step away from just looking at movies all the time and trying to make other movies that I could then pour into like these very intimate life experiences that I had. And that doesn't mean you have to go join the army or whatever, you can do anything. You can right. just you know, do something else for a little while. But I would highly recommend um, putting yourself out there in a way that uh, allows you to grow as a person. And you said that the life you lived uh, kind of changed the way you live now. Is, sure. that, is, is that, okay. Um, how so? Like how, how does the, I'm assuming you're talking about, you know, when you were in the army and stuff. Yeah. How does that impact or how, what, what kind of influence does that have on the life that you live now? Um, I think I'm much more vulnerable, vulnerable because of it. And I, I seek out people who also like cherish uh, or honor that vulnerability of understanding that like we all are kind of running around scared to a degree trying to figure it out and there's really no need to like try and place order on everything and that's I think what I kind of learned with my separate life away from film mm -hmm. was that I, I, I can't control everything and so that made me a much better observer and a much better collaborator I thought. Do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on that you kind of give us a little peek into? <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, I'm working on something right now that's um, it's kind of a science fiction take on some of my experiences in Afghanistan. Um, I can't say exactly what the twist is yet, but um, you know, it's something maybe in the vein of like a Slaughterhouse Five. I really appreciated Kurt Vonnegut's book. Um, he's a fellow vet, and I felt like he really um, distilled that experience. Um, and so I'm hoping to try and do the same thing. There's something that the modern war films I think have missed. That um, I don't know. Maybe it's on the news too much, or and we're just making old war movies at this point, uh, or remaking them, I should say. But maybe there's some way that I could bring someone into that experience where they see something that is, you know, essentially alien, and then they could feel this thing that, uh, that me and my friends felt when we were deployed. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, when you're making, you know, if you're in, in the process of making a war movie, do you have any sort of flashbacks, or does it take you back to, you know, when you were in Afghanistan? What yeah. kind of feelings do you have when you're actually putting a, a project together like that? You know, it's, the last one I made was uh, based on my interpreter. I had a female interpreter on my second tour. Uh, we became incredible friends. And it's interesting, there was this moment, I just was watching something Roman Polanski had said about making The Pianist. And he was always afraid to make that movie because he thought that he would confuse his real memories with the fabricated memories of making those memories on set. Right. And he was right. There are moments that like, I'm trying to, like, where I've conflated um, this, these real experiences with this like incredible friend of mine, this uh, Afghan American woman, and with these other ideas that I have about her, and so that that part is strange of like what is real anymore. Right. But um, I think that's probably worth the idea of trying to explore it. 
what would you say is your favorite part about being a director? My favorite part about being a director? Oof. I think the best part is that you get to create something and you can say, this is what we've made and we can share that with other people. A lot of other work, like my sister's a teacher. She's an incredible teacher. Um, and the way that she, I think, cherishes her job is, is that connection with a child and like the, them growing together. Um, and that's a really beautiful bond, you know, but she doesn't have this thing to like show everyone. It's like, it's only, I've only been able to peek into her world going into her classroom and seeing that. Um, and it's a really wonderful thing to um, have something tangible and physical to share with other people. Um, and it's really a benefit, I think, of this work. And um, if you were to go back to when you first entered Calm and just yeah. kind of look at the path that you went on to, you know, present day, is there anything that you would have done differently? Mm -hmm. I probably would have been a better student. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did go to grad school, and I was a much better student in grad school because I realized um, how awesome education is. And that's like something you can't say when you're 18. You, you might feel it a little bit, but there's something that, um, like for me, I don't, think, I don't think I'd worked out who I was yet. And there was a lot of energy spent in other areas of my life that uh, were not nearly as productive. But maybe, maybe they're formative, I don't know. But I do wish that, uh, God, I mean, there's like four years of your life where you could just, I could have taken more philosophy classes or literature classes or like anything like that. And this, this space would have been really cool to do it in. Whereas like now it's like, I have to do it at like midnight on the internet. Yeah, you don't have the, own, you don't, don't have, have the time, time <laughs> to commit to an entire semester of like falling asleep. Exactly, you know? yeah. exactly. So, what does um, being a calm alum mean to you? Well, it means I'm in good company. <laughs> yes, this is that's, very true. That's one thing. Uh, but you know, it's really interesting that the people I work with now, um, like I have agents, and uh, there are three of them. Two of them are BU the alums. Um, um, my producing partner, uh, he's a BU alum. Uh, my writing partner is a BU alum. Wow. And I even went to another grad school. I went to the American Film Institute. And I made a lot of friends and collaborators there as well. But there's some very formative relationships that, were, uh, that are instrumental to who I am now. Right. And I think that that, um, you know, I, to me that is uh, <laughs> it's the best part of BU in many ways, is the right. people that I met. Well, thank you so much for coming out and taking the time. It was such an honor to meet you. I mean, I'm graduating this December, and to know that you know I'm a, I fall into the alum category That's with right. you and everyone else, <laughs> it's it's so great. So I really, really appreciate your time coming out. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you. Cool.